The next special case we're going to look at are differences of squares. So when I have perfect square, perfect square, and a subtraction in the middle, we can factor them very quickly. So the following polynomials are differences of squares. Differences of squares. And whenever we see a binomial, so two terms, and we have subtraction involved, the first question should always be, is it a difference of squares? If it is, it factors very nicely. So what happens with the difference of squares? a squared minus b squared, so a perfect square minus another perfect square. We take one factor of each, so a and b are the square root of both of them, and we need to alternate signs. Okay? Because when we FOIL, our middle term is going to be gone. So if we were to actually FOIL this out, I'm looking at a squared minus ab inner plus ab, and last, minus b squared. So it's always going to result in that way. These middle two terms are going to cancel, and we get a difference. We have subtraction involved of a perfect square and a perfect square. So when we see that pattern, we automatically can jump to these two factors. So let's take a peek. Part A, is it a difference of squares? Yes. So again, how does it factor? I need alternating signs, and I need the square root of the first one. It goes in the first spot. Square root of the second one. He goes in the second. And again, if you're not sure, foil it back out and make sure we get there. We can do a quick check. First will give us x squared, outer minus 2x, inner plus 2x, last minus 4. We get there. Okay, keep looking at a few more. Part B, I've got a perfect square and a perfect square and a difference. So how will it factor? Need to alternate signs. The order doesn't matter. We could put the minus first and the plus second. And I need the square root of the first and the square root of the second. So the square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of p squared is p. So sometimes the factors are more involved rather than just one constant. Might be the product of two of them. Okay. Another case that might arise is in the very beginning, we can look and ask, I've got a binomial and a difference. Are they perfect squares? No. But is there anything in common that we can factor out of both of them in the very beginning. So they're both even, at least a factor of 2. And for our variables, I've got two factors of x being multiplied over here and six of them over there. So I can take out the common 2. And what are we going to be left with? 9. We already took out x squared, so he's just hanging out by himself. And we've got 25x4. So after we took out the greatest common factor, what are we, what do we have in the end? What is the result? Perfect square, perfect square, and a difference. So we can factor it. And again, don't forget to write out the greatest common factor on the front. So what are we looking at? 2x squared, and how do we factor this end piece? Square root of 9 is 3. We need to alternate signs, and the square root of the last term. So the square root of 25 is 5. Square root of x to the fourth is x2. x2. And in the end, we should always be asking, can I factor it any farther? So looking at my binomial here, that's a difference. Are they perfect squares? No. So we can't factor it any farther. But we should always look to see if we can. And again, if you don't think it's correct, foil it out. Make sure you get back to the original binomial we were dealing with. So go ahead and take those two tries, give them a shot factor as far as you can go. So in the beginning, we've got perfect square, perfect square, and a difference. So this one will factor nicely. So the first term of the binomial, the square root of the first, 2t. We need to alternate signs, and the square root of the last one, 8. Okay, but now... In the end, is there anything in common that we can take out of these still? Or you could have done it in the beginning. So yeah, from this one I've got a factor of 2, t plus 4. And from this guy I've got another factor of 2, t minus 4. 
So in reality, we've got 4 times t plus 4, t minus 4. So even if you don't recognize or catch in the beginning that there's something in common that we can take out of both, you need to recognize in the end and ask, can I factor out anything farther? In this case, we could. So if you had taken out a 4 in the very beginning, you'd still get down to the same result. The order doesn't really matter, but generally we take out the greatest common first. So looking at the second one, is there anything in common that we can take out of both in the beginning to help us out? x squared. When we do that, we're left with 36x to the 8th minus 1. We need that placeholder. Okay, and we want to ask, are they perfect squares? Yes? Uh-huh. And I've got a difference, so we can factor it farther. So we've got x squared, two binomials, square root of the first one. We've got 6x4, 6x4, plus and a minus, and the square root of 1 is just 1. Okay, and we should keep asking, can I go any farther with this difference? Is it a perfect square? x to the 4th is, but 6 is not. So we're done at that point. And again, if you're not sure, foil it out, make sure we get back to the original. The last two examples are some special cases where we have to recognize that we have got to keep going until we factor down as far as we can go. So looking at the first one, I've got a difference of perfect squares, so I know I can break it down into two binomials, the first term being P2, and we've got plus and minus, square root of the last term, 4. But we want to ask, can we go any farther? So a sum of squares can never be broken down farther. You could try it off on the side just to prove to yourself that it's never going to work. But in the second case, we've got another difference of squares. Difference of squares again. So we got to keep going. Again, p squared plus 4 is never going to break down. But how is this difference of squares going to break down? So the square root of p squared is p. We need to alternate signs, and the square root of 4 is 2. And in the end, again, we want to ask, can we break it down any farther? As far as it can go, as far as it can go, as far as it can go. Done. And for the second one, again, do we have perfect squares over here? Yes, and yes, and we have a difference. So how is it going to break down? So what is the square root of 16? That's 4, so we can break down the constant on its own first. And the square root of x to the 8th. So if I take 8 and divide it by 2, I get x4. And we need to have alternating signs. Square root of the last one, 9. So again, first example, we've got a sum of squares that can never be factored any farther. But the second one is another difference of perfect squares. So we can keep going and break that one down. So sum of squares, can't break it down. But the second factor is going to turn into what? Square root of 1 fourth is 1 half. Square root of x to the fourth is x squared. We need to alternate signs, and the square root of 9 is 3. And we should keep asking, this one's already down as far as it can go. So is this one. What about this last? So I've got x squared, which is a perfect square, but 1 half isn't, and 3 isn't. So we're done. So we're as far as we can go down there.